Welcome back everybody to Extreme Off-Road Silly Bills and today we're dealing with the 2022 Ford Focus ST. Now this has 668 horsepower, 682 pounds-feet of torque from a 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine. The car itself now weighs 2,601 pounds, has off-road tyres now as well as all-wheel drive and off-road suspension and it can earn you 0.16 seconds, 0.105.88 seconds and going to a top speed of 197 miles an hour so obviously the engine in this is smaller than the engine that you get in the base car but even with full upgrades the base engine in this car only gets about 625 horsepower which is not bad but obviously we get more power out of it with this engine and we also get more in the way of torque so you know we need as much power and torque as possible in this uh, series and uh, yeah the stats are overall fairly solid for a car that is ultimately a more of a road car than an off-road car so yeah off-road capability braking launch acceleration and speed are all fairly solid handling is actually pretty good as well for a car of this type although it's not the best but certainly better than what we had with the Volkswagen thing in the previous episode and despite this having more weight and less power and less torque than that car we should hopefully be quicker as plenty of Fords have been out on this series so far 15 in fact and um, yeah the likes of the XB Falcon GT is in the top 20 still as well as the uh, Ford Focus RS rally car is currently in 34th place so we've had plenty of success with Fords in the past so hopefully we'll uh, continue that with this car and uh, yeah obviously it doesn't have as much power as some cars on the series hopefully that just means it's more controllable and at the end of the day, the acceleration is not awful. I'm sure it's not the best, but again, hopefully that just means it's more controllable. Get the most out of what power and torque we have. It's certainly going to be a lot more manageable than the Volkswagen from the previous episode, which was a real handful. Which no real surprise given all of the extra power that I had. And although this does have a fair chunk of extra power, it's about 400 horsepower more, it's not as big of a gap as the Volkswagen thing had between its standard power and the power we eventually gave it. So, yes, it's a lot, especially for a car of this type and a car of this model, uh, but still. Quite out of the realm of possibility in terms of giving a car this much power. Bigger concern is dealing with the all wheel drive system, which, as you've seen already, can induce some oversteer. And even though it does weigh more than some cars in this series, it's still a relatively lightweight. Could mean it can get thrown around. As you can see there, it happened then, just then. The rear end bounced up, and then when that came crashing down, the front end came back up again, so that can be a little bit of an issue. Didn't even get to raise the uh, suspension all that much either, I think it was 0.86 of an inch, so it's not that much taller on this off road suspension, but. It's better to have it than not. Especially since it can help avoid some of the bumps and jumps. A lot of which you can't really see on this uh, course. It can sometimes catch you out. One benefit of using a front wheel drive car and then converting it to all wheel drive is that the power was always meant to go through those front wheels. So the turning isn't half bad actually. And because we've got a smaller engine up front we do actually have a little bit less weight up there which has been aided by the only body modification we've given it, which is the new front bonnet. Uh, or bonnet in general, of course, it's the front. Um, but yeah, that shaved off six extra pounds, so uh, make that front end that a little bit lighter to help the turn in that bit better. I know it doesn't look good, but 
you know, anything to save weight is always a benefit. And there we go. So we're not going to be as quick as the XB Falcon, but at 3 minutes 19.782, we're still not half bad. Although, again, we are slower than the Ford Focus RS Rally car, which is our, still our second fastest Ford. Uh, but we are the third fastest Ford, as we have beaten the F-150 Raptor R, which was in third, as well as the Ford Mustang Mach-E 1400 and the Ford Supervan 4. So we're quicker than those vehicles, which is uh, pretty good. And in terms of this time in general, in terms of other cars, we are ahead of the Lexus RCF Track Edition. We are marginally behind the Cupra Urban Rebel Concept, less than 0.1 of a second. We're also quicker than the Toyota Sports 800, Chevrolet Silverado LT Trail Boss, Volkswagen Santana, Rivian R1T, a Alumicraft Class 1 Buggy, Hyundai i30N, which is another hot hatchback, so I'm going to be quicker than that as well as the Audi RS Sportback, Cooper Fermenter VZ5 and the Rivian R1S. In terms of other hot hatchbacks, we're slightly slower than the Abarth 695 Biposto, as well as the... What other hot hatchbacks have we got out there? Uh, there's not that many more hot hatchbacks that are quicker than us. We do obviously have the Peugeot 207 Super 2000, which is a rally version of a hot hatchback so there is that but yeah outside of the Focus RS rally hot hatchback uh, there's not really that more much more quicker than us that are in the same kind of class it's usually just rally versions of hatchbacks like the uh, MG Metro 6R4 for instance so uh, yeah overall in terms of hot hatchbacks that's done really really rather well and to be the third fastest Ford is not too bad at all Obviously it had nowhere near the level of power of some other vehicles that it's uh, either quicker than or slightly slower than. But on the whole, because it had the control, because it had the really rather good acceleration and the fact that it didn't really have any issues, it's reasonably quick. By no means the fastest, but after the Volkswagen thing in the last episode, I'll take a little bit of sanity and uh, calm and restraint over the uh, madness of that vehicle, which yeah, was a real handful, whereas this is a complete opposite of that. Nonetheless, so, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.